Good morning, family. Wonderful to see you and to be able to add my own words of welcome to those of you here in the sanctuary at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful Jamaica, and to those who are joining us on the World Wide Web, welcome. Can we all say together, I am a center of spiritual living? Can we say that? I am a center of spiritual living. There's room in my house for all. And that is the truth. There's room in our house, the house of consciousness, the house of our hearts, the house of our spirits that just welcomes everyone and just opens our arms in wide embrace. A special welcome to, I want to say old family, but they're not old, it's just the relationship is. Lovely to have you with us. And I just feel so wonderful to be able to share this moment with you. It's, it's, it's really very special. And I got a story, um, which it's a true story. It was, it was um, published in the Washington Post a few years ago. In Washington, D.C., in a metro station, a man started to play the violin. It was a cold January morning. He played about six classical pieces for about 45 minutes. And during this time, since it was rush hour, it was calculated that maybe one or 2,000 people at least went through the station, most of them, of course, on their way to work. Three minutes into his playing, a middle-aged man noticed that there was a musician playing. He slowed his pace and stopped for a few seconds and then hurried up to meet his schedule. A minute later, the violinist received his first dollar tip. A woman threw the money into the till and without stopping continued to walk. A few minutes after that, someone leaned against the wall to listen to him. But the man looked at his watch and started to walk again. Clearly, he was late for work. The passerby who paid the most attention was a three-year-old boy. His mother tugged at him, tugged him along, but the kid stopped to look at the violinist. Finally, the mother, as you know, mothers do, they keep walking and the children walk like this, um, never taking his eyes off the violinist, this, the violinist. And interestingly, five or six other kids who passed during the, the period that he was there did the same thing. <laughs> when he finished playing and the silence took over, no one noticed, no one applauded, nor was there any recognition. No one seemed to know that the violinist was Joshua Bell, one of the world's leading musicians. He, and he was playing one of the most intricate pieces ever written for the violin, on an instrument worth 3.5 million US dollars. Two days before his playing in the subway, Joshua Bell sold out at a theater in Boston and the seats for that performance averaged $100. Now this is a real story. Joshua Bell playing incognito in the metro station was organized by the Washington Post as part of a social experiment about perception, taste, and the priorities of people. The outlines of the experiment were, and I quote, in a commonplace environment at an inappropriate hour, do we perceive beauty? Do we stop to appreciate it? And do we recognize talent in an unexpected context? One of the possible conclusions from this experience, my friends, could be if we do not have a moment to stop and listen to one of the best musicians in the world playing the best music ever written, how many other things are we missing? Yeah, I hear an amen from the choir. <laughs> you know, friends, at our 38th anniversary celebration on Sunday, July 7, when as a community we sought to honor our own maestro, Noel Dexter, I found myself wondering how many of us really realize how blessed we are to have in our midst 
one of the Caribbean's creative geniuses, and I dare say, one of the best musicians in the world. You see, me the hang down, don't sing a wrong note. As I go for a class, he said, you're not singing through your facial mask. I said, oh, you know. He said, I'm listening to you all the time. <laughs> So my friends, my encouragement this morning is titled, The Power of Appreciation. Because this is really one of the things that I think we need to, to really contemplate as a community. Are we appreciating what we have? Norman Wright, our former vice president of the Board of Trustees, walked in here on the Thanksgiving Sunday and said, this is so beautiful a place. You know, I guess when you are away for a little while, you're like when you leave Jamaica and you come back after 10 days, it's suddenly just, no, Margaret, you come back every week. <laughs> but you suddenly realize how very beautiful this place is. I just drove over to Runaway Bay um, on the weekend, Friday and came back yesterday, and it's breathtaking. It is absolutely breathtaking. And I have a confession to make. You know, I, on, the, on the Sunday of our um, Thanksgiving service, we had uh, the, the quadrants of our Thriving Ministry Initiative arranged a praise walk around the property. And the first stop was under the date palm. And I know that it's called the Phoenix Robilini. Uh, it's really a date palm tree, although the weather conditions here aren't um, extreme enough for it to, to bear fruit. And then the second stop was under that uh, tree over opposite the, the, what we call the island on, on Fairway Avenue. I, I, I stopped this morning and picked a blossom from it and the, the beautiful honey brown pods on it. I don't know its name. I think it's an acacia, but I'm going to find out. But my confession is that I love that tree. I've watched, I've seen it bloom over the years. It wasn't until the Sunday of our Thanksgiving service that I had ever gone and stood under it in its shade to appreciate the absolute beauty. I mean, you know, people said to me, this is so lovely, we should have a service under here. Um, and I just think about it yourself, you know, have you walked around this, this, this temple property and just, just allowed yourself to drink in the beauty of this oasis in the middle of New Kingston? It's, it's probably the best kept secret. Although I know some people often, we, as in, my, in my office, I look through the window and I see a few people who, who know the secret and park their cars to canoodle and, and, and you know. Um, <laughs> yes, bless them. So my friends, each time we express genuine appreciation, we really rev up our energy and our capacity to feel, to open that feeling center in our hearts. And when we take time to appreciate, we become more sensitive to the beauty of persons, animals, scenes, presences around us. Because appreciation enlarges and enriches our world. Years and years ago, my dear friend Marguerite Terrain gave me a book titled Life Prayers from Around the World. And there's a beautiful poem of appreciation for things Caribbean written by uh, poet Agnes Maxwell Hall, which I'd like to share with you. For honey, pepper, leaf green limes, pagan fruits whose names are rhymes, mangoes, breadfruit, ginger roots, granadillas, bamboo shoots, chocha, ake, tangerines, lemons, purple congo beans, Sugar, okras, cola nuts, citrons, hairy coconuts, fish, tobacco, native hats, gold bananas, woven mats, plantains, wild thyme, pallid leeks, pigeons with their scarlet beaks, oranges and saffron yams, baskets, ruby guava jams. Turtles, goat skins, cinnamon, allspice, conch shells, golden rum, black skins, babel, and the sun that burns all colors into one. For this, we thank thee. And so it is. 
My friends, to appreciate means to esteem highly. And it also means to rise in value. So when you say to someone, I appreciate you, you are really saying your value has increased. Isn't that just a wonderful thought? Whenever you show appreciation, you say, you know, I really appreciate you. You are raising their value. It's value added that you're putting on that soul and that spirit. Dr. Ernest Holmes, the founder of this great teaching known as the science of mind, said, and I quote, when we constructively praise and creatively bless, life abounds with love, peace, and joy. How true. Holmes explains it thus, and I quote, there is a law common to all people which responds to every man's belief in life at the level of that belief. No man, says Holmes, can be happy who lives in a continuous state of condemnation of people, conditions, and things. We must learn to praise and not condemn. End of quote. You know, when I was studying human behavior at Johns Hopkins University, one of my uh, assignments was to counsel with a couple whose marriage was unraveling. And I was quite frightened because what did, I didn't know very much about counseling. And they were actually uh, highly successful professionals um, in Baltimore. But they were friends of my professor and had agreed at his urging to be my guinea pigs. He said, you'll find him charming. He's Jamaican and they have a different... Uh, a view of everything. <laughs> that was my introduction to them. <laughs> Neither of these wonderful, he was a lawyer and she was an accomplished musician and then a successful everything. Mother, housewife, um, you know, they lived, she kept a home that looked like it hadn't just been pulled out of the pages of Good Housekeeping magazine or something. And neither of them felt that the other appreciated them. They were so busy being successful and perfect at what they did that they had become unavailable to each other. With, when I interviewed the husband, he couldn't recall when last he had expressed appreciation to his wife, apart from the obligatory Mother's Day and birthday cards, you know, when you buy something, some expensive bauble, you know, and that's supposed to make up for not having noticed you for the rest of the year. And she said dryly about him, I show him my appreciation because I take care of everything for him. This couple made a major breakthrough when they learned that appreciation means to share oneself and above all, to let others in. You see, intimacy means into me see. Look into my heart and see who I really ha am. But many of us hide that when we build a little wall. Not only Mr. Trump building walls. We build walls around our, our hearts because we don't want anybody to know how easily we're hurt or what they will do. We, don't, you know, we wonder, if you have this information, will you still love me? If you knew my, my warts and, and my, my foibles, would I still be um, the person that you loved when we met? And so we build this wall and... When we build a wall around ourselves, we lock people out. But even more importantly, what do we do? We, we fence ourselves in. We lock ourselves in until we forget. It's, I, my image in my mind is like of an onion. You know, there's that tiny, tender center. And then we have, over the years, we build layers upon layers upon layers upon layers of protective skins or walls until we lose sight of even who we are. And so it, it is really an amazing experience and experiment to begin to, to open up and to say there's room in my house for all. Come in and have a look and see. Come in and sit down and relax under the shade of the tree that is my life experience. Come in and, and enjoy the blossoms that have come out of, my, out of my creativity and stop and listen to me play. Stop and listen to me play. I may not be playing on a $3.5 million violin, but I play with my heart and I sing for you with my soul. And this is what I think I want to, us to take away from this morning as we continue to honor our, our wonderful maestro. And there will be, I think, more of that later, which I look forward to. But I want us to, to just bear in mind that we have something precious and we need to stop and appreciate it. Look in the mirror and say, I appreciate.
appreciate you every morning. Um, there's an author called Hal A. Lingerman, and he gives the following ways in which you can, you can begin to, to make a dramatic change in your life through appreciation. The first thing he says is become more interested in persons for themselves. Instead of attaching labels to others, choose to look for the jewel that shines at the center of every life and seek to locate the hidden talent or dream that may be a word of appreciation from you may awaken some other heart. Secondly, develop more spontaneity by enjoying the process of contact with others, not just the results. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the treasure and treasure the differences and the uniqueness of other people. It's the diversity that makes it so rich and so, and so exciting. If we were all the same, it would be very boring indeed. Which brings me to number three, expand and diversify your own interests. Even the most interesting and fascinating person can become boring to themselves and others. You need to cultivate new areas of knowledge, sensitivity, and spiritual awakening in order to remain continuously expansive and growing in your consciousness. Join a class. We have two here every, every week on a Tuesday and a Thursday evening, but there are classes online. There are just things that you can do. Learn something new. Do something new, experiment with something. And if you've been thinking, oh, I'd like to get involved um, with my church, there are four quadrants, and they are doing amazing work. Join one of the quadrants. On the notice board, there are a list of all the quadrant members, and um, if you can speak to anybody who is in a quadrant, and you can speak to me, of course, I'll rope you in. But get involved and begin to expand your, your repertoire of relationships and of learning experiences. And fourthly, get yourself a hardcover book if you don't already have one, or an exercise book, any book, and begin to keep an appreciation journal, writing every day at least five things that you, you are grateful for. Um, one of my favorites is just to pause frequently during the day and to say thank you, God, for this moment. Can we do that? Can we say thank you, God, for this moment? Thank you, God, for this moment in a half voice. Thank you, God, for this moment in a whisper. Thank you, God, for this moment. And now in your heart. Do it off, my friends, and you will feel the radiance of the God presence clearing your own heart and opening the eyes of your spirit. And that brings me to your assignment. All this week, your assignment, should you decide to undertake it, is to abstain from finding fault or saying anything critical or negative to anyone, and that includes yourself. No, this is not an easy, as easy a, 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 an assignment as you may think. Every time you catch yourself thinking of or about to say something negative, look for something to appreciate in the person or situation and express that instead. And one of the ones that I get caught with all the time is the heat. You know. So instead of saying, oh, God, it's hot, and look how the place dry, find the appreciation in the Bogan Villas and the Poncianas and the, the, the trees that flourish and bloom in just radiant abundance in the dry season. It's, it's just staggering when you look around at, at the, the, golden the golden showers, the Acacia Fistula, there's one over on, on um, Seymour Avenue, on, on the lawn on Seymour Avenue. But just find things, the opposite of whatever you're going to complain about this week, and practice, practice, practice the power of appreciation. And my friends, as we commence, our 39th year as a spiritual community. Remember that you are a vital, valuable, and authentic, God-blessed, appreciated member of this community. We need to just learn the power of appreciation. The, the, the Catholic mystic Anthony de Mello tells the story of a group of tourists who get onto a, a, a touring bus and the blinds are drawn, you know. And they, they, have, they spend so much time arguing about who should sit on what side and who should have the seat of honor and who should get the other side on the way back from the destination that the bus gets to where it's going and has passed through the most breathtaking scenery um, on earth and all of them missed it. 
how the blinds are drawn. So open the blinds of your heart and your, your consciousness to see the beauty, to celebrate the beauty, and to appreciate every living soul with whom you come into contact this week. Let us say together, I love and appreciate myself. I love and appreciate myself. My presence on the planet is healing the world. My presence on the planet is healing the world. I am making a difference. And to your neighbor, say, your presence on the planet is healing the world. Thank you for making a difference. Your presence on the planet is healing the world. Thank you for making a difference. Your presence on the planet is healing the world. Thank you for making a difference. Namaste.